what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. I really do hope that, and welcome to today's video, which is the story of Timo Werner, the young German marksman superstar striker courted by many clubs around world football, certainly over the last couple of years, has ended up at Chelsea, agreed a five-year deal to join Frank Lampard's Blues. But how did this all happen, man? How did he end up at Chelsea? Since joining Leipzig, he was destined for big things. In fact, there were two other clubs in his way prior to landing at SW6. Those clubs are Bayern Munich, big surprise there, and of course you probably know Liverpool Football Club. In this video I'm going to tell you how it came to pass, tell you the story of a young striker hailing from Stuttgart, how he ended up in the capital of London and looks to be joining a very exciting project at Chelsea Football Club. Information from this video has been cited from the likes of David Ornstein of The Athletic, Raphael Honigstein, the German news reporter who covers English and German football and Liam Toomey and Simon Johnson also of The Athletic. So before I crack open this tale for you guys a quick reminder to subscribe to this channel Football Therapy if you've not yet done so if you choose to please do hit the bell notifications icon because that is important and why not drop a like on this video to help me out all right, let's get into it. All right then, Timo Werner, a young striker. Well, he's just turned 24. He's uh, an elite center forward. In fact, a converted winger, much like Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, started off playing wide and was brought centrally and has developed into a sort of hybrid forward, left winger, striker kind of thing. Timo Werner has been described as an incredibly professional character with a superb professional demeanor. You won't get any form of scandal there. He's an incredibly focused individual, keeps his head down relatively introverted but when he's on the football pitch he rises like a giant man's a beast he's strong he's fast absolutely ruthless in the box his conversion rate is mad he came through at the scene as a 17 year old at Stuttgart and impressed a lot of people and then got a move to the new money-fueled project RB Leipzig Leipzig were doing bits and they were flying up the table after they got promoted into the Bundesliga but as a young player, your sort of ambition, if you're well, if you are an ambitious player like Timo Werner, your long-term ambition isn't to play for RB Leipzig. Not just because perhaps they're not the highest tier of football club, but they are in fact the most hated club in Germany. That's right, even more than Bayern München. So he did well there, he scored loads and loads of goals. He's played at every single age level of the national team for Germany and done incredibly well at that. Suddenly, everyone's taking notice of Timo Werner. And to be honest, Germany weren't really producing much top, top class centre forwards and the ones that really led the team or the national team to glory were starting to fade away. So it was Timo time. So he was always destined for a big move, especially scoring an incredible amount of goals like he's always been doing. In fact, eventually a move would materialise for Timo Werner to move on from Leipzig. It was to go to Bayern Munich. Now this wasn't so long ago. The player had waited a while to get a big move and he was excited to move to Bayern Munich. Yes, all players in Germany end up going to Bayern Munich, it's a bit of a boring story, but still it's a big move for a German striker and he was pleased with the move, but in fact the deal did not materialise due to Bayern's not really assertive approach, in fact they were too casual, they kind of hoped the player would run down his contract more, they'd get him for cheaper, a little bit too casual from Bayern Munich and although you know, Timo Werner is regarded as a very professional, headstrong character. He's actually a vulnerable guy, and apparently this affected him emotionally, and he'd already said goodbye to all his RB Leipzig teammates, and he'd moved on in his head. That could be psychologically damaging, man. And then he had to go back and play another season, and he was a little bit wounded from, the, you know, the lack of this move happening. Raphael Honigstein speaks about this and talks of him as a sort of emotional character and how he felt vulnerable and maybe a little bit damaged from this move not materialising. So when, you know, the next part of the story happens with Liverpool Football Club, there was a concern about the young player's character. Spoiler, things turned out okay. So Bayern Munich was done. He was never destined to go to Bayern Munich again. I don't think he was very happy at the club. In fact, it's been reported that he was very angry with Bayern Munich. So anyway, he continues playing for RB Leipzig and he's continued scoring loads and loads of goals and the world is still watching. Enter Liverpool Football Club. Champions of Europe, champions elect. Jurgen Klopp, 
highly, highly rated German manager, had great success with Dortmund, now Liverpool champion of Europe, a bit of an icon out in Germany. He forged a relationship with Timo Werner, they really, really liked each other, and they decided Timo Werner was going to go to Liverpool. And apart from having a great relationship with the coach, you can understand why he'd want to go to Liverpool. Like I said, aforementioned champions of Europe, champions elect to the Premier League, great front three and I think Timo Werner actually accepted the fact how he would not start for Liverpool immediately I think the plan was he was going to come in the following January off the bench rotate in while the likes of Salah and Mane were at AFCON and then slowly become a first team player in that squad a gunman like Timo Werner scoring that many goals starting he must have really believed in the project to accept that role initially the financial group that own Liverpool Football Club could not execute the move, even though an agree was dealed in principle between both Jurgen Klopp and Timo Werner. Now, Timo originally thought, if I can't join Liverpool this summer, I'll just join next summer. He's got a very reasonable buyout clause this summer, if you consider the player and how much it actually costs, whatever, like around 60 million euros, or a bit less, depending on how the deal is executed. That actually goes down approximately 20 million euros the following summer so Liverpool were going to hold out for that and he'd be happy maybe to play another season out in Leipzig that was plan A and plan B waiting out but things changed both these buyout clauses come in small windows within the transfer window there's 12 days or a little bit more for potential suitors to come and trigger the clause. That window shuts, you can still buy the player, but not for the release clause. After Liverpool pretty much decided they could not afford him this summer and trigger the clause, Jurgen Klopp called up Timo Werner, was very sensitive in his approach and explained it's nothing to do with him as a player, them not coming in, they literally just can't get him this summer. Timo Werner understood, went away. So what's the, gonna happen now? Plan B, wait one more season at Leipzig and then move to Liverpool? Well, no, things changed again. Although RB Leipzig coach Julian Nagelsmann absolutely loves Timo Werner and wants him to stay regardless, Leipzig have got some problems themselves with financial fair play. In fact, they're a little bit in the red and they spent a lot of money when they were building their sort of recent legacy. And it turns out they need the money now, the full current buyout clause. And they said to Timo, dude, we, we're gonna sell you, man. Even though touted as a sensitive character, Timo Werner accepted this and he was like, right, okay, to be honest, man, in myself, I'm ready for a move. Let's have a look. Where should I go? It can't be Liverpool. What can I do? Well, other clubs were interested and the likes of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of Manchester United did go and meet the player unable to convince him to join Manchester United. Much like Erlen Haaland, he couldn't convince him to join. Enter Chelsea Football Club. Matt Law reported on The Telegraph prior to lockdown in February, Frank Lampard and technical advisor Petr Cech flew over to meet Timo Werner and his representatives in Germany. Haha, <laughs> very sneaky. Both good, intelligent communicators and Petr Cech can speak fluent German to also communicate, well, if there's any difficulties, just essentially speak German. They manage to work their magic. The thing is with Frank Lampard, when he talks to someone, he can often charm them quite easily. He did the same with Hakim Ziyech and convinced him to sign for Chelsea only recently. Another great example of Frank Lampard's charm is prior to going, getting the job at Derby, he had a meeting with Mel Morris and immediately won himself the job as Derby coach. Mel Morris did not want to give him the job. He spoke to Harry Redknapp prior and he's like, oh no, I can't make him a manager, maybe assistant coach. But Harry said, just sit down with him. Just sit down with the boy. <laughs> can't do a Harry Redknapp impression. Anyway, the next day, Mel Morris rings up Harry Redknapp and says, oh, he's blown me away, I've given him the job. Just an example of what Frank Lampard can do. And him and Big Pete did the same to Timo Werner out in Germany convinced him to join Chelsea Football Club, convinced him of the exciting new project and explained how he would feature and play in Frank Lampard's plans project team. So Timo Werner agreed to a five year deal, the wages, etc, etc. They increased slightly, I think, as the deal is structured. Another important thing is RB Leipzig were looking around to try and find a suitor to sell Werner to. Marina Granovskaya slam dunks the financial b-ball in the hoop and says, look, we're here, we intend on playing the buyout calls in full, no structured deals, no funniness like perhaps Manchester United tried. Here's the money, mate, make it rain. Chelsea come in and as it stands, Timo Werner is coming to Chelsea Football Club. So it's a very, very peculiar one, but ultimately it's a story of a striker who wanted a big move, who didn't get 
really his first two choices, but ultimately is very happy in where he's going in Chelsea Football Club. And Chelsea, as a club, took massive advantage of what is a difficult situation financially. You could argue it's distasteful in a pandemic, but not really. They're making a purchase when they're able to, and the player and club, and indeed selling club in Leipzig, are all very happy with the transaction, the transfer, the deal. So that's the story of Timo Werner to Chelsea. That's how it happened in chronological linear order. Like I said, I sourced the information from writers of The Athletic, Raphael Honigstein. They've all said it on different platforms, and I've sort of just consolidated the information and presented it to you here as a story. If you've enjoyed this story, please do like the video. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel. You're welcome to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's happening soon, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.